Hi, I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyanasundaram, consultant neonatologist and pediatrician. Uh, you might have watched uh, some of my earlier videos on uh, acute infections, vaccines and COVID in particular. And in this video, I address some of the important concerns that most uh, people have that is about the COVID vaccines. Uh, thankfully, uh, even though the pandemic has uh, caused a huge problem for everyone, both financially and physically, some of us have lost our loved ones, some of us have gone through very stressful periods of separation from them, hospitalization, uh, even intensive care treatment. Thankfully, we are coming to a stage where we might be able to control it better. We have effective vaccines uh, available and they are being launched all over the world. So as we speak, it's the third day of the vaccination program in India. So on the 16th, it was launched and uh, they are targeting healthcare professionals and high risk groups. In the UAE, of course, the government has been extremely efficient and uh, they have introduced the vaccines much ahead of time. It has already been going on for about uh, five to six weeks. And uh, in this video, I would quickly look at the different vaccines that are available, what your choice would be. First of all, I would like to keep, we give a quick overview of what vaccines are. You already have a video on the topic. So vaccines are basically uh, mechanisms to stimulate your own immune system so you can fight an infection when you face it in the future. And uh, obviously, when you get a vaccine and you get a natural infection, you may get the virus getting into your system, but your body is able to fight it off. So the uh, immune response goes in a channeled way. One of the main problems with the coronavirus infection is that the disease severity is affected by the cytotoxic uh, storm, which is your own body immunity doesn't know how to react to it. So it goes haywire, it causes problems which affect your lungs, it affects the different body systems. So it's your immune system, which is uh, chaotic in response so to speak instead of protecting you it's harming you when you give the vaccine you can say so to speak that your immune response knows how to behave and so you may not have the cytotoxic storm and uh, vaccines uh, for any disease I mean we have had vaccines for so many years uh, and so vaccines can be inactivated vaccines it can be component vaccines and it can be uh, specific uh, designed vaccines so COVID vaccine is one of the first vaccines which has gone through such a rapid development process. So a few uh, months, six to eight months has taken for it to be launched in most countries once it started developing. So some of you might have watched uh, Anthony Fauci's uh, discussion. He's a US uh, medical uh, person. And uh, one of his uh, key words was that the main reason it has been accelerated is the scientific advances. So we already have the technology, the genetic engineering and the genetic fields uh, have advanced so much that we can get the uh, viral RNA components so uh, efficiently. And so we are able to uh, hook it into systems we already know on how to uh, replicate the protein and uh, the RNA and so on. And we also have the vector tools and all if you want to do specific vaccines. So in terms of the vaccines, we have the regular type of inactivated vaccine. So you have the Sinopharm and the Sinovac from China, and we have the Covaxin from Bharat Biotech in India. Uh, of course, there's a lot of controversy about the Covaxin uh, because of uh, lack of the th third stage studies being publicized. But I would like to tell you that the governments do not take such decisions lightly, and they obviously have the preliminary data available with them, and they don't want to delay. There are cost implications. It's made in the country, and it's much cheaper and also uh, the government has invested a lot into producing this vaccine the same applies to any other vaccine the Pfizer vaccine for example when the governments agreed uh, the agreement was that the Pfizer would pay for the production of the vaccine the experimental stages but then the once it they showed it was effective all the governments would buy at least uh, 200 million doses so that's the kind of agreement that goes uh, wherever cost is involved in uh, research you have to pay for it in one way or the other uh, the Covaxin as well, the first two stage trials have been successful and the third stage results are pending, but they have already been in process. So I'm sure the government has information. So be reassured that any vaccine that is licensed by the government has to have due diligence and it would be safe. 
the phase two studies prove safety the phase three studies show efficiency more than anything else so the safety has been established it's more the efficiency and the efficiency to be honest needs to be uh, reviewed for all the vaccines as we go on because it's still early the studies are having smaller numbers when you talk of a pandemic with huge numbers involved so pfizer for example 44000 people and the moderna vaccine has 35 38000 people and the difference is like 150 to 180 people infected on the non vaccine side versus four or five on the vaccine side what they mean by infection how they define it how uh, diligently they are testing it so these things affect it as well so uh, 90 to 95 percent efficacy has been shown for these vaccines compared to uh, 70 to 80 percent for the inactivated vaccines inactivated vaccines uh, we just uh, take the virus we inactivate it to a form where it doesn't uh, produce any disease and then we inject it and usually it needs a booster dose and uh, now the current uae schedule says three weeks indian schedule says four weeks so a booster is essential for inactivated vaccine the first one causes the exposure of the memory cells to it and the second one stimulates the memory cell so you start reacting better the next time you face it uh, the pfizer and the moderna vaccines are both uh, new uh, type of vaccines uh, they have the rna which is injected into us and the rna gets into our cells they are coated with nano uh, particles which can merge with the cell membrane so they can enter into the cell usually in the muscle where it is injected and then it uh, stimulates it incorporates into it uh, incorporates into our body system so it stimulates the protein production the protein is a spike protein in most of these vaccines and the spike protein is expressed by the cells which are synthesizing this protein then your body starts uh, recognizing it as foreign and attacks it Many people are concerned about this mechanism because you are actually injecting genetic material. But remember that a virus itself is not a live organism. Any virus we are talking of is a kind of RNA or DNA which gets into your body, which uh, uses your own body mechanism to replicate. So it's already happening with any viral infection and that's why some viruses are carcinogenic like the uh, hepatitis B virus, the human papilloma virus which causes cervical cancer. So there is a risk obviously but it is not any more than a routine uh, common cold that you catch where the virus works by this mechanism uh, the covid shield uh, which is the second type of vaccine in india is uh, obviously the astrazeneca and oxford vaccine and that is a slightly different mechanism it's using a vector so the adenovirus which is already an established virus which is produced uh, is submerged with one dna and uh, the DNA uh, produces a protein for the uh, COVID where, which again stimulates your body mechanism. The difference between the RNA vaccine and the DNA vaccine is uh, once the DNA vaccine gets into the vector or the adenovirus vector, that's a chimpanzee based uh, adenovirus. So once this uh, gets into it, the stability is there. So it can store at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade like any other vaccine. However, the RNA vaccines are uh, very sensitive. The Pfizer vaccine has to be stored at minus 70 degrees. And uh, once it's taken out for three to five days, it will be there at a normal fridge. But uh, during the whole of the transport chain, it has to be maintained at a very, very cold temperature. Most. Uh, countries do not have this uh, extreme cold storage facilities and Pfizer itself is providing this uh, for many countries however the cost goes up with that so the Moderna vaccine also has this uh, need to cold store but it's uh, minus 20 degrees and it can be more stable for a longer time at a lower uh, the relatively higher temperature uh, US and UK have gone for the Moderna and uh, Pfizer vaccines as a mainstay. The UAE has the Pfizer vaccine as well as the Sinopharm vaccine. Uh, India has the Covishield and the Covaxin uh, vaccines. Uh, India has obviously chosen the vaccines which are more stable without too much of a stringent uh, regulation. The cost of the vaccines obviously the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are more expensive. And uh, in terms of uh, whether we should take it, there is no doubt we should take it because we are in the middle of a pandemic. Anyone is at risk even though the high risk age groups have been targeted. Uh, taking the vaccine doesn't eliminate the risk of you catching the infection but as I said it prepares your body. You may not get the cytotoxic storm, you may not face the serious uh, problem that you would face otherwise. So we have to be uh, taking it and be uh, responsible citizens. Children currently do not get the vaccine. 
uh, 15 to 18 years the Sinopharm or the inactivated vaccines may be given uh, in the UAE. However, in India, I think uh, they have kept the li limit as 18 years. Uh, pregnancy is uh, better avoided because you don't know how they will react. Lactating mothers, if you are at high risk, you can still take the vaccines. That's the government recommendation. Uh, you can choose to wait for the first three months or so till your baby is a little bigger if you want. Uh, however, if the risk is high, you can take it earlier. And uh, I myself have taken the Sinopharm vaccine given by the SEHA, mainly because it was convenient to take uh, with my children at the same time. Uh, many of my colleagues are taking the Pfizer vaccine. So side effects with the Sinopharm vaccine is hardly anything. I finished two doses uh, about 10 days ago. I didn't face any side effects, no pain, no fever. And it's a small volume of the injection, so the muscle pain is insignificant. Many people taking the Pfizer vaccine complained of significant uh, muscle pain on the limb which was injected. Some have flu-like symptoms. Of course, we have to watch the development in Norway where many elderly people with the Pfizer vaccines have died, whether it is associated or not, we don't know. So, uh, be aware that vaccination is there to stay. Be aware that uh, all the vaccines have been subject to uh, definite studies and you don't need to panic about the type of vaccine you get because that's not often in your hands because it depends on what the government is offering at that stage. Sometimes uh, we may have a situation where the private sector gets all these vaccines and you have a choice but at the moment we have to protect ourselves as best as we can. You don't want to be delaying uh, the earliest opportunity especially if you're, uh, you have elderly members in your family. Encourage them to take it at the earliest possible. So, uh, I hope uh, this information is useful. I know it doesn't cover everything, but uh, this is just to give you an overview. I would encourage you to take it. Don't worry about the type of vaccine. Um, whatever is the easiest option for you uh, should be fine. Complete the course. Of course, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, we don't know how long their efficacy will be because they are new types of vaccines. You are very likely to need boosters. Uh, once the RNA goes away from your system, uh, it might be long lasting also. The answer is we don't know because this is the first human vaccine of this nature. That's why there's a lot of anxiety. But as I told you, it's similar to how a virus works in our body. And so you have to accept that risk uh, is what I feel. So uh, if you are worried about it, go for the inactivated vaccine. It's absolutely fine as well. The 10% efficacy difference doesn't make a huge difference in reality as long as it prevents a serious disease and that it does. It has been shown that 90 to 100% efficacy in avoiding serious disease. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Do share and uh, do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.